So my name is Julian Misic, Misic. It's a Serbian uh, surname. My father was Macedonian. He was born in Majamala, <clears throat> and his father was Serbian. So after the earthquake in '63, my father moved to London, and he married my mother. She was English, <clears throat> and uh, eventually they split up, and my father moved to Norway. And I'd end up living in Norway, so that's where I live now. And I'm a musician, so that's my that's my thing. So I come every year to Macedonia uh, to visit my relatives and also to make music with uh, Macedonian musicians. Yeah, so uh, the contrast like uh, between Norway and, for instance, Macedonia is very, puts every everything in perspective uh, for me. It must, um, uh, I love Macedonia. I, I've been coming here since I was a kid. Uh, but on the other hand, Norway is such a rich country. It's one of the richest countries in the world. And uh, I, uh, since I'm making music, I think it's kind of important to, to say something with that opportunity. Like when you're on stage, I mean, there's lots of uh, pure entertainment in the world, right? And in Norway, the musicians tend to avoid... Uh, being political, or spiritual, or religious and stuff like that uh, because they want to entertain. <clears throat> so I feel then it's kind of my job to, to, um, <clears throat> to say something about the, the situation in the world, right, is to have an artistic perspective on that. So <clears throat> these days uh, we've had a huge uh, refugee um, uh, not crisis, but we've had many refugees uh, taken into the Nordic countries. Sweden, they've had um, huge issues with that because they took in far more than they could handle. Whereas Norway uh, have taken in maybe 10 times less refugees than Sweden did. So we're on the right side of it, things, I think. But then there's a huge debate, a political debate in Norway, whether we should stop taking in the refugees, whether we should take in more of them. And it, it tends to be a, a tabloid debate, right, where people are exaggerating their points on each side and there's no sensible middle way, really. So on one, on one hand, you have the tolerant ones who want to take in, like, everybody. And on the other hand, you have the ones on the right who want to just stop any, any you know more refugees coming to Norway. And so my f uh, one song I've written that's, is called Damascus, uh, which is about, about the refugees coming from, from Syria and about the Norway being the land of milk and honey. So, <clears throat> so I, I took a story from the Bible, from the New Testament, when Paul is on his way to Damascus and he sees a blinding light and he, he basically comes to faith because of that. And so in my song, Damascus, uh, I say, we're the land of milk and honey. Now Damascus is coming to us. And um, yeah, so there's a video out there called Damascus uh, on YouTube and stuff if you want to see. Well, as I said, um, there are lots of people, fantastic musicians in the world, uh, singing about love and romance and, <clears throat> and that, which, which is great. Uh, but I feel since I've been given this talent and, and you know, the possibility to make music, I'd like to use it like, you know, speaking, speaking about things that I think are quite important. Uh, like uh, like um, kind of injustice in the world, right? Like there's lots of poverty, whereas there's other, others who are very, very rich, and Norway would be one of those countries. So I feel living in Norway, it's kind of a responsibility for me to say, OK, we're rich, but we also have an obligation for solidarity, right, for, to those who are less fortunate than ourselves. 
Yes, um, so a very close friend of mine, Dorian Jovanovic, his, uh, his band String Forces, uh, <coughs> he, he um, has, we, we've had a close uh, kind of working relationship for several years and during this time we've become very close friends also. And uh, so what tends to happen is that I usually record stuff in his studio and he plays the oud uh, really nice and I like to use these kind of instruments in my music so and stuff like that and actually in in previous this June he was in Norway and played with me on my release concert in Bergen so that was a fantastic experience also um, Damian Tamkov who's a composer he he arranges my uh, string quartet arrangements and I have my own string quartet in Bergen, they play with me, so, so it's nice to have a good composer from him making those arrangements. And Dobrila, the singer in um, Chalgia Sound System, she, she sings on one of my songs for my n new album. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure about we can make a change, but I think more it's we can talk to people who already have that stance that we're promoting and we can kind of encourage them to keep on, you know, keep on believing in these things. So maybe I can't change the opinion of somebody who's already opposed to my opinions, but I can encourage the opinions of those who, you know, kind of... Uh, agree with me but be, because it's hard uh, you know sometimes um, it's hard believing in the right thing right I mean when you live in a country that's um, very fortunate as I do people tend to become very self-centered right they think of their themselves their own family how we can make money how we can secure ourselves <clears throat> But you also have a, <clears throat> quite a large amount of people in Norway that, that care about others and want to help others. So I, I like to encourage those people. Yes, um, so now I'm making a new album already. I just released my last one. Um, uh, my new album is called The Angel's Diaries. And um, it's basically over half of the songs are taken from old, like, fairy tales and folklore, like The Emperor's New Clothes or Pinocchio or, or yeah, the Three Little Piggies, stuff like that. And I rewrite these, uh, these fairy tales, so I, I use them as a kind of <clears throat> frame for, for what I want to say, like, politically and spiritually in our times. And that... That was always the role of the fairy tales. It was to kind of tell people politically uh, uh, things about the po social and political and spiritual kind of uh, how, how, how the things were in the countries uh, like the, Germany and Norway and, and England, right, at the time. But the, the fairy tales have changed. They've been commercialised now with Disney. And, but they used to be have a very central role in, in, in this, yeah. So um, we do have one very <coughs> powerful music, musical movement in Norway, uh, which is a, a guy that I respect very much. His name is Ola Hamra. And they started a little over 10 years ago something called Folgespil. It means the play of colors. And that's basically a, a dance and, and singing organization with lots and lots of kids like young young people uh, from all different countries like the refugees from like Africa, Somalia, Afghanistan, Syria and what they do is they compose the music so they they infiltrate the different songs from the different parts of the world into one big piece and now they've been um, uh, they've been suggested for the Nobel Peace Prize and I just thought I'd mention that because uh, 
I'm very happy for them, even though I don't have anything to do with them. I know the people that work there and I'm very proud of that.